I'm with a photographer. I feel weird pointing a lens at a photographer, even in, a, in an iPhone. But uh, this is the great Lee Shelley. Photographer, shit audio, uh, VPI, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes, right? So many, yeah. and you're so good at what you do. Oh, thank you. You make everything, even the shitty stuff, look good. <laughs> that's, that's why you make the big bucks. <laughs> Could always be more. So, but what I want to know is, did you always take pictures of audio gear? I, uh, I did not always take pictures of audio gear. I, I took pictures as a hobby through college and, and so forth, and I got away from it for a while. And I was sales and marketing manager, so I was actually the one directing some of the photo shoots for other companies. Uh -huh. uh, and got back into it with the, with the advent of the uh, DSLR camera that made digital uh, better. Uh -huh. Back in the film days, uh, my job was a lot harder. Uh, so now with the digital cameras, uh, you get that instant feedback, and it's great. So uh -huh. um, when I left uh, the, my last of my uh, marketing uh, jobs back in uh, 2008, I uh, hung out my shingle and decided to try to be a full-time professional photographer right in the middle of the worst economy uh, in the history oh, of well, economy. Timing is everything. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, you know, back in the day, I would, uh, I would sort of shoot anything. Uh, I used to joke, <laughs> uh, if it moves, I'll shoot it. Yeah. Uh, but... Um, <laughs> decided to, that it was time to find a niche and uh, I got lucky in that I picked up my very first client, uh, uh, JDS Labs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, would, uh, I was shooting their tiny uh, headphone amplifier that was built into an Altoids tent. Right, right, right. And uh, that worked out really well and I took those pictures and I went to uh, Jack at Woo Audio uh -huh. and I uh, went to Vinnie Rossi. And I said, if I can make an Altoids tin look this good, right. just imagine what I could do for your really cool stuff. Right. And uh, they both agreed and they hired me. Uh -huh. And uh, I said, honey, I think I might have found a niche. Right. Uh, so I took those uh, pictures out to Rocky Mountain Audio Fest back in uh, 2010. And I walked around and I, I met with everybody there in Can Jam. And I said, hi, I'm Lee Shelley. I want to be your photographer. Uh -huh. And uh, surprisingly, uh, there was a niche and there was a need. Uh, what I found is that these companies were big enough that they knew they needed marketing, but they were small enough that they didn't want to deal with a big ad agency where right, every right. photo shoot was $12,000. Right, right, right. uh, and so we ended up working well together and, uh, and it sort of has, has spun out of control from there. Mm. Uh, now I visit uh, you know, the, the major audio shows each year and I still meet with all these clients face to face mm. and uh, the rest is uh, a little bit of history. But you know the thing, it's funny because I, I work for various magazines, I guess I shouldn't name any names, and when they do original photography, I'm appalled sometimes about how lame it is. You know, I think the, I think the goal for audio photography is to make the stuff look cool. Some of it automatically looks cool, but some of it is just a box, right? Well, you've got to bring it out in that. You, you, you right. know, sometimes, you know, it does look really cool. I mean, I, I remember shooting uh, for Jeff Rowland, and his stuff is yeah. just gorgeous. Well, but bringing that out in a single frame so you see just what you know what i'm seeing live mm -hmm. uh and, and express that in a, in a frame that can be printed out uh is, is a challenge and mm -hmm. it's a it's a i guess a little bit of a talent and uh right out of college back years and years ago i worked for uh Bryn Mawr stereo back when there was such a place in the philadelphia marketplace okay. uh selling this gear uh -huh. so i've always had an affinity for the audio gear uh -huh. and uh and and i remember back then the same kind of feeling like boy some companies really got it, right. and some companies' literature just was lacking, and it didn't do anything to help the salespeople mm -hmm. uh, really sell the product. And so I took that knowledge and understanding of what it took to sell this product and translated that into what the manufacturers need to really make their stuff look sexy. Mm. And uh, I, I've sort of established not, you know, not just the basic on white or on black, which is important for catalogs, mm. but also doing what I call static lifestyle photography. Mm -hmm. Where you're seeing the product in its you know, natural right. situation. Right, right, right. Uh, and the, the fact that I understood what that natural situation actually was, yeah, yeah. was helpful so that the manufacturers didn't have to come to me and explain, okay, this is where you need to put a preamp. Right, right, right. Uh, you know, we need to have a pair of speakers in this shot because it won't make any sense otherwise. Right. So it was helpful that I spoke the language of the, uh, of the audio gear. So what's the, what's the hardest type of product to shoot? High gloss black, uh, piano black speakers. As I was asking the question, I knew the answer. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that certainly is the biggest of challenge. Anything that's highly reflective. Uh, uh, you'll get some companies that love to do chrome. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Well, chrome means that you're really not photographing the product, you're photographing whatever is reflected in the chrome. Right, right. So right. there have been times when I've had to go back in and Photoshop myself out of the picture because I'm in the shot. You can't put like that, what do you call it, uh, the white uh, blimp around it? Uh, you can do, you do some the of that, but it, it, the still, if the face of the product that's facing out toward the camera is chromed, right. whatever is, the camera is going to show up right. in the shot. Right. So we've got, there are ways in, uh, of working around that, but uh -huh. it's, uh, it's certainly the biggest challenge uh -huh. of the batch. Uh, but uh, high gloss piano black is really all about what you don't show. It's right. really about edge lighting and all that kind of thing. And that's, mm. that's, you know, it can be a matter of moving a light a half an inch to get the shot versus not get the shot. So to take the shot, <clears throat> the setup of the lighting, once you get the lights right, it's easy, I assume. It's right? easier, yeah. It, yeah. It's all about the light. Uh, right. I had that epiphany years ago is that it doesn't matter how amazing the scene is. If the light's not good, don't waste your time pressing the button. Yeah, yeah. And uh, with the strobe lights that I use, you don't get to see the result until you see the, the shot on the screen. Uh -huh. Because the strobes don't light up until you oh, yeah, yeah. actually shoot the right, shot. Right, 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 right. So, so do uh, do, the, do the manufacturers uh, you you give them a great shot? Does it happen very often that they go, no, 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 no? It's got to be more like this. Or it, that or I, it doesn't happen often. I mean, I, I try to uh, employ a conversation with them ahead of time so mm -hmm. that I get the vision of what they're after. Mm -hmm. But I remember back the first major. Um, manufacturer that gave me a shot after that can jam experience was uh, shit audio uh -huh. and I've done everything that they've You've done ever done since and I'm, I'm right? really yeah, happy yeah. with that yeah, yeah. that relationship but when I first started out they said well we want this on black stuff that you do we love it but we'd like something more mm. I said well well what he said well we don't know so mm. uh, Jason's a great guy but he said I, I don't really know what it is that I want so I took some of that what I call static lifestyle setting, you know, put some headphones out of focus in the background, put mm, it in, a, mm. in a, an environment. Mm. And I sent them off to Jason. And a week goes by and I don't hear anything back. And I thought, oh, geez, I've blown my first assignment. Right. And I finally get a hold of him. He said, no, 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 I've just been busy. That was exactly what we wanted. I said, oh, thank God. Because <laughs> after that, you go, what? What am okay. I going to do next? <laughs> exactly. But that was sort of nerve wracking when you don't know exactly what it is that the manufacturer is after. Um, but you know, I, I try to make this as, as collaborative a, uh, a process as possible to make sure that they get their message out. Yeah, I remember, I guess in the 80s or something, I used to look at Japanese audio magazines like Stereo Sound, mm -hmm. and they had the best photography. And the American magazine's photography was just so dull. It's like, hey, this is cool stuff. Why are you making it look so boring? Mm -hmm. Well, I go back now and I look at, uh, I've got old issues of, of Stereophile from the, the late 80s and early 90s. Mm -hmm. And uh, I go back and look at the photography that's in there. Back in the era that, of film, which make, like I said, it made the job much harder. But uh, the photography was so lame back then compared yeah. to what it is now. Yeah. Uh, that it's, I wish I could do my job you know, 20 years ago, right. have a lot easier time. Yeah, you'd stand out faster. But th there's, I mean, there are some companies that do a fantastic job with their photography uh, you know, th th that don't use me. But uh, I, li I hope to, uh, I like to think anyway that I'm trying to raise the standard a little bit across the board. Well, I want to tell you about one picture. So I don't know if you know this guy, Dave King. He's sometimes a photographer. I've known okay. him a long time. And he used to work for Mark Levinson in the cello mm -hmm. years. Sure. Right? And he took this picture of the cello palette, which mm -hmm. was an, a t yeah, the equalizer, sure, ten thousand mm -hmm. dollar equalizer. And what made this picture memorable was the lighting was really great and everything. But what he did was he laid a bunch of roses, you know, long stems with their thorns. Yes, I do roses. remember the photo. Sure, you remember this picture, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. And the contrast between this uh, brushed aluminum, very cool looking box, but the but the flowers the on pop top. of color was so important right oh, you needed to yeah. do that yeah yeah it's great so to have that kind of to think that way it's you know maybe adding something like you were saying adding the headphones can make a huge difference yep. putting things in context or putting things in an environment the propping uh, and, and everything else uh, is is huge i mean mm -hmm. in food photography uh, it's not just about taking a picture of the food. It's about p taking a picture of you know where it is and 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 trying to place someone in that you know in their mind. It's in that that setting, which is why there's a whole industry of people called food stylists. Mm. That that's all they do. They're not the photographer. They just set up the scene. Right. right, right. And uh, I sort of take on the responsibility of being both the photographer and the audio stylist. Right. 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 Uh, trying to to set up a, an environment that makes sense. You're also great with people. Uh, oh, you thank you. Great, because I see them all the time on Instagram, and those are professional uh, 
headshots? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that about uh, probably about 75 or 80 percent of what I do is uh, is consumer electronics, mm -hmm. uh, and the other 25 or so percent of what I do is uh, people. Mm -hmm. My tagline for the business is uh, showcasing people and products in their best possible light. Yeah, uh, and good. so, yeah, I, I tend to bring out the best uh, in in people with with the the headshot photography. The challenge is that you're trying to bring out an expression or or a message in an otherwise contextless environment, and uh, trying to draw that exact expression out of someone without any other environment around them is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's um, I've, I've studied a lot about this and, and, and worked hard on trying to bring out the right expression to send the message that somebody wants all in a single frame. Uh, so I've done some, I've done some headshots both in the audio industry and, and uh, completely different industries across the board. So I've asked some of my photographer friends this because I said I, when I was selling, I noted that higher than what you think percentage of my customers were photographers. And I was saying to them, is there a correlation between people who are photographers and people who like audio or high-end audio or, you know, they're, they're, obsess they're obsessive about audio? And surprisingly, both of them, Dave King was one, another guy, they said, no, blah, blah, blah. but I, I don't, they're the photographers, but I think that there is some I, I do. No, I definitely do think there is. And, and I have... Uh, uh, a cadre of uh, vintage cameras mm. that will often find themselves in the background of, uh, of lifestyle audio gear, mm. uh, specifically because they, it's the same demographic right. and it's the same, t it's the technical nature of it that makes it that it's a corresponding, uh, a correlation between the two different people. Yeah, it's tech uh, and aesthetic. Exactly, combined. exactly. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, there's an art to audio mm -hmm. and there's an uh, there's a technical side to cameras right. and and the the, the uh, conjunction between the two yeah. the juxtaposition of the art and the technical is what makes both uh, industries uh, really popular with their with their constituents so I absolutely think that there's a, a correlation between audio hobbyists mm. hi-fi hobbyists and camera hobbyists mm -hmm. there's, there's no doubt or pros for that yeah and and I think it's probably even more with the hobbyist side of things because there are only so many people making money in the audio industry and there are only so many people making money with their cameras. Right, right. But the, the people that are into both things uh -huh. is, is a high correlation. Uh -huh. uh, people love the, the, the creation and, and they love the, you know, they love seeing the picture come out just the way they love hearing the audio come out right. of the speakers. It also has something to do with capturing reality. Right? Sure, that sure. Absolutely. Like recreating reality. Right, yeah, absolutely. Recreating reality. You're, right. you're trying to recreate that live experience in audio and you're trying to recreate what you saw oh. that day that, that was intriguing enough to press the shutter button. Yeah, yeah. Right. On that, I think we're ready to go. Ah, fantastic. My name is Steve Gutberg. This is Lee Shelley. Check out his website at www.leeshelleyphoto.com. Yeah. So uh, thanks, guys, for watching. See you again real, real soon. This is Steve Guttenberg, the audiophiliac from uh, VPI House Backyard somewhere in New Jersey. See you guys later. <laughs> Thank Bye. you.